Hard. Welcome to the August 24th Metrics Models Working Group. Um, minutes are in the chat, so if you could click on that and add yourself, that would be excellent. Yehoi, thanks for joining us. I know it's early in the morning where you are. I think it's seven o'clock. I think it's seven o'clock, is that right? Yeah, exactly. So what's the, the traditional work day in China? When does it start? Uh, I think it's pretty warm. And it's not so warm. I'm not so, it's not rainy. No, no, the work day. What time does the work day start? I start from uh, 9 a.m. And nine. I work half past five. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty normal. Uh, but usually you have to work more during the night. Well, that's that's yeah, it's also the American way. We like to pretend that <laughs> it's only nine <laughs> to five. <laughs> I actually had a, a university once that actually made me log my hours. Okay. And uh, I've very, I've logged I've logged in for my own sake, and it, it never, it's never made me a happier person. Oh, you're fifty cents an hour if you look at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good. All right. Well, thank you. Um, so let's see. The first thing on the agenda, whoops, the first thing on the agenda today, and I'll share my screen, was to, to move this. We had talked about doing a bi-weekly cadence. I think we just wanted to meet um, today just because this was only our second meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but we could set it up so it's bi-weekly. But I wanted to, tomorrow morning, US time is the Chaos Asia Pacific call. So it might be nice to set this one up like opposite. You know Off what I mean? cadence, not yeah. the same, not the same more evening, morning, morning, yes, exactly. evening. Exactly. exactly. Yep. So, I mean, we could still meet next week is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For this, the, met the metrics model working group meeting, and then we'll get off on to the, to the biweekly. Does that work for people? Yep. I yeah. was uh, I was actually going to propose that as well. Yeah, well, I, I think that crosses a lot of us. <laughs> That'll be okay. great. We'll meet next week, um, and then from there, pick up. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so, Sean. Okay, so part of the metrics model working group is we have a a similar working group called the App Ecosystem Working Group, um, who's also taking a look at how uh, metrics can be drawn together in meaningful ways. But to, I think Sean had spent some time. So Sean, I'm going to turn it over to you and kind of talk about the App Ecosystem Working Group. And I might fill in a few things just kind of from my own perspective as, as you Sure, know. sure. If you don't mind giving me screen sharing ability, I will share just a presentation that's linked there. So the way I would frame this is- Can you the make that a little bigger just for- I, Oh like, yeah, recording. of course. Yeah, I think, uh, how's that? Yep, that's better. Okay, so the App Ecosystem Working Group, I would say works from the top down in other words, they haven't developed very many metrics in the full chaos way of developing metrics. Instead, what they've done is they've thought about the model first. And I think many of the metrics that they're proposing but not have not developed are metrics that could be developed by multiple different working groups. And the place where they've done the most work, interestingly enough so far, is in the area of uh, event organization. And that may reflect the interests of that group, but they think about the development of metrics as they first start with the goal of, you know, so example, for example, goal of the retaining and attracting of contributors. And then they have a series of questions and the metrics that correspond to those questions. And this is, I think, at least structurally similar to the models that we're talking about. It's just that they've developed them from the top down and they haven't gotten all the way to the bottom yet. Does that make sense? So for how long do people who attend events stay within the community is one question. They have three metrics that they'd like to measure, but they have not 
fleshed out what those metrics are. It, and does, then, it does make sense. Yeah, and then so given a person who's new to the project, not a member, how much more likely are they to become more involved and stay longer in the project? I'd presumably that um, uh, they've proposed a couple of metrics here and suggested some data and they have documentation that does go into a little bit more detail about what would be involved in the metric, but not, they've not fleshed out, I think any metrics really. And then also under the goal of retaining and attracting contributors, what role do events have in, in engaging contributors? So contributions of attendees, contributions of a segment of a project are, are two metrics for that question. And there's two more questions for that goal, just to flesh out the full example, how many attendees are also contributors? And then the metric is number of attendees who contributed. So here we have a one-to-one -one mapping between the question and the metric. And finally, for that example, how do the people at an event feel about the project? And they use suggest emojis and sentiment analysis or event hashtags on social media as metrics that, that could roll up, all in the interest of attain, you know, this goal of retaining and attracting contributors. That's basically it. Right. Um, okay, I will bring, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen now too. Yeah. And this is what Sean is talking about. So in the repo, this is what they've developed. And so they follow the goal question metric approach of the chaos project. So they basically do. this is a, a technique that we use in the chaos project to define a goal, have questions that address that goal, and then metrics that can address the question. Basically, it's kind of this nesting. And it's, it's worked very well in the chaos project. And they're, they're clearly yeah. doing it for personas too. So this right. isn't, a, this, they follow this persona model. Um, and then to Sean's point, like length of a, of a time, length of time of attendees membership is not currently a chaos metric. And this one, I don't think, you know what I mean? No, like, I don't, no, I don't the, think these are metrics. I don't think, I don't, there may be a couple that are actually metrics, but for, for the most part, I believe that yes. all of them are not metrics. And this, there is a Google document that I could pull from their notes that where they've kind of updated this and removed some redundancy. And I think they'll be updating this repo shortly. And okay. that's, and that refinement is reflected in the PowerPoints. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is different than I think what we've been talking about structure wise. Mm -hmm. Art and like looking at the contributions from the folks at Huawei and taking a look at kind of how we've been talking. It's like, let's take a look at our existing metric set mm -hmm. and then how can those be brought together? Right. So that they can be kind of implemented today, at least right. that's my, my understanding. I, I, mine is the same. I think uh, I think when it comes to uh, the types of models and the way we are talking about the metrics, I in my head I've been thinking about kind of more traditional software design models. Uh, this is this is really close to our metrics definition work, and I I think it's almost too close to our metrics definition work. So tell me what you mean by that. I'm not sure. I, mean, I know what you mean. With the with the goal question metrics here, I'm not I'm not sure. I mean, you're right. It's the it's top down versus bottom up. So it's mm -hmm. it's but it's basically the same kind of metrics definition work that we were doing before. I don't necessarily see this as uh, model work. I I agree with that. I mean, like I would, and the app ecosystem might disagree, but I would look at this and say, okay job to do build this metric right you know and i think that's what you're saying kevin like this is kind of the logic we follow and then it, it lands us on a metric to build right yeah and, and, it's, you, and it's a good model it works great for defining metrics yeah uh but when it comes to use case models and personas and flow charts and all of these things these are these are tried and true uh, software engineering design tools. You know, there there are standards around them, and I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning towards taking advantage of those existing structures that already exist and and 
using those models to, to model our metrics into forms that can be easily translated to uh, software. Yep. Yeah, I think I think there can I th I think the question exists in the same location as the model does in our discussion, but the significant difference is that we have tools that will give us these metrics in the other in the case of what we're doing with modeling and yeah. we and that now we can say with these tools that give us metrics which ones do we want to kind of group together and look at at the same time to understand something, something that's important to us yep. and this is this is still very much the conceptualization stage and i think it's very very well done detailed conceptualization work but you're right how people actually will consume these this question may not actually be answered solely by these metrics or by these metrics, but there may be other metrics that need to be integrated to answer that question. And it may not, and it may be in fact a different question that gets asked that we build the models around. And so I agree too, they're, they're different things. Um, Elizabeth or Vinod or Yehoi or Salona, do you have comments on this as well? Yeah, actually I share, I share the same ideas about it. I, I... Okay. Basically, I, I want to use uh, this metrics model to, to make things as uh, some dependencies in the software uh, point of view to uh, we build, on, build uh, some new applications uh, based on those uh, exact metrics mm -hmm. and to show how, how it works. Yep. Okay, good. Okay, well, then we should probably write a goal statement for this working group because <laughs> we agree <laughs> that that's the goal. <laughs> That's, it seems so rare that we all agree. <laughs> Not that we don't ever agree. It's just, you no, know. <laughs> I, th I, th I think actually having the contrast of the app ecosystem group helps to center our agreement. So maybe actually, I mean, is it, should we write a small goal right here? Uh, I, think so. I think it's not a bad idea. Let's see, where are we? We're kind of here, right? So the goal of the uh, metrics model work group um, to develop, well, somebody give me some words, develop models. Um, that are, that include the integration of multiple chaos metrics oh, for well, specific. That include uh, what did you say? multiple chaos metrics in a way that people actually want to consume them in practice. That's a, a great goal. Um, I think that's uh, very, very well said. That's how Oh, and saying something well, in one sentence, like straight into the point. We, <laughs> I'm going to put a star by that. I've <laughs> been working with you for seven years, Matt. I've learned a few things. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm no dummy. <laughs> <laughs> I applaud you. All right, great. All right, I'm going to fold that. All right, cool. I think that is probably something we have, if you look down here, like at some point we're going to be building a repository. I think we need a repository. We haven't done that yet, have we? And at some point we're going to have to. Move no, we don't. Company. I don't believe we have a repository in the chaos organization yet, or at least if we do, I don't know where it is. <laughs> it would be <laughs> under WG dash metrics dash models. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Maybe maybe we should use the metrics repository. No. <laughs> There's nothing in there at the moment. Right. Exactly. Ironically. We can we can take it. That's ours now. Oh geez. <laughs> Every, everything else in there we move to governance. Or, we're or, or to the respective working groups. So, all right, great. Um, I mean, I can already tell one of the action items. If somebody wants, can, can anybody create the repo right now? Yeah, I mean, I can. I can create, I can create repos. I have the power. Can you just, um, can you follow the model, the WG? Yep, WG so dash, dash, dash what? Rick, here, um, WG dash. Metric models. models. Yep. And then maybe for the first action item, put our goal in in the README. We do have a we do have a standardized README as well, which we can right. pull from the uh, governance repo. Uh, do we have a standard license that we use? We do. 
Yeah, what is, that's in the governance repo as well. MIT? Yep. Uh, okay. If you pull oh. the README, uh, standard README, it has that licensing option in that uh, bottom column of the README. Already? Okay. Right. Yes. I'll tell you what, what I'll do is I'll create the repo with the uh, README, and then what I'll do is I'll add that, add that, add that to it. Thank you, Sean. So um, on the license thing, by the way, one of the things that we're starting to do at IEEE is a lot of documentation is actually going Apache 2. Um, and the reason we're doing that has to do with IPR issues, especially in regards to standards and metrics. So you might want to think about those different pieces just in case anything comes up that uh, you worry about um, someone patenting after the fact. Um, we should and probably take that. Had that happen. Um, in fact, that was a concern uh, at Hyperledger when we were doing Aries um, because people were bringing things in uh, in the documentation level, not in the actual implementation level that could be construed as uh, patentable. And so, yeah. What were you before Apache? Huh? What, were, what was it before? Well, IEEE didn't have anything, um, oh, okay. but uh, and, and that was the other problem with uh, Hyperledger is it was just the documentation and Creative Commons doesn't cover that. So, you know, it's it, I'm just saying it's one of the things that we're moving towards and I'm trying to get Josh to write up the official statement in regards to it, but he just got back from paternity leave. Okay. So, um, but it is, you know, one of those things that um, did bring up Okay. Um, and, and actually, I'm, I'm kind of surprised I would go talk to Mike about it. Um, I could. By the way. Um, Mike Dolan? Is that yeah. Yeah. Um, because he and I discussed that at 1.2. So. Um, okay. He was actually the recommender of MIT back when we started. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Well, anyhow, that's, uh, I, I had a conversation with Aaron Williamson about that too. Okay. Um, because of the fact that we did have that problem. Um, I had that happen distinctly in a um, open source project where a certain company, <coughs> Apple, um, came in and talked about something while we were in the design phase. And then when we actually went and implemented it, we thought everything was fine because we were doing the typical DCO model. And then they came out and said the patent and had and it, it, it basically killed the project. Interesting. So, okay, yeah, uh, that's good. Thanks for the tip, Salona. Yeah, uh, well, we should. It just reminds me of the whole Java API bullshit too. So it's oh like, my. the Oracle you know, lawsuit. That's, that's why I get paranoid on metrics, most especially uh, for we, that reason. Should we add this as an agenda item to the uh, community meeting? To um, I probably, I'll probably, as a first thing, I could probably just reach out to Steve and Mike, Steve and or Mike. I, I would do that. I would talk to Winslow yeah. or, or Mike and say, hey, you know, Salona mentioned this, and then they'll be like, oh, good. Salona. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank you. Because they were used to me bringing up weird legal stuff the entire time I was at Hyperledger. I'm like, well, there's this, well, there's that. And so I, I committed the template with our goal as we stated it to the repo that I put in the minutes. So we need that. We'll be, we can fill that in. We don't have to fill it in tonight, but dun, dun, dun. we at least exist. Good job, Sean. GitHub, I live in it. <laughs> and, and by the way, one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is because, you know, this is kind of on the down low. It's not public. Um, well, you're being but, recorded right now. Yeah. Uh, Do we okay. need to pause recording? Pause uh, recording. Or purge the recording at this point. <laughs> 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 Maybe. That's purge. also possible, Salona. <laughs> you know, that's totally fair. <laughs> I, 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 I'll... I'll Ask me about it later and I'll tell you why I care about this suddenly so much. No problem. That's all I have to yeah. say. <laughs> okay. I got my reasons. I'm not just being paranoid. <laughs> no, no, that's no problem. I, I, in the words of Dr. Johnny Fever, these days, paranoid's just good thinking. <laughs> Yo. All right. Um, okay. So, from, I just wanted to bring us from the prior meeting, from the first meeting that we had where we made really great progress. Um, we had talked about, and I just, I, I, part of me wants to just kind of think through these two components. So um, we had talked about like the, the idea of personas, use cases and relationships between metrics, right? As 
kind of motivators. And then we had also talked about like focus areas. And I think it was Yehoi that had kind of mentioned like the operations, governance, mm. development and community engagement. So how do, how do people see like personas, use cases and relationships between metrics as related to operations, governance, and so on and so forth, development and engagement. You know what I mean? Do those map in your head? Are those, are they related? Do we talk about them in the same sentence? Like, John, you were gonna say something? Uh, I'm, I'm, I do think that they're related. That the App Ecosystem Working Group did break down a bunch of personas that I think are useful. And so it's not as though they, they're, they, but that's very top down, right? So I think what we have here is we want to talk about personas and use the existing metrics to build models that serve those personas. We can act, we can be able, we're able to act much faster because we have tools that already build these, to generate these metrics. So yeah. I, I think the, let me see if I can find their list of um, personas because it was a pretty good list, I thought. I think a little bit though, we can build we can build these personas without actually connecting them to use cases. We, we can we can build them separately and then connect them, you know, post hoc. The question is, do you, is it um, starting with a use case? I think seems more at the same level as a model than starting with a persona. Actually, we had some discussions in the bottom of this documentation. I mean, in the metric oh. model documentation, and uh, we are thinking about the personas. We think of that as a two ways in the bottom, in the last meeting minutes. In our meeting, yeah, we uh, last meeting. Yeah, it, not not this. I can scroll down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. For the second point, personnel, so we can think of it as uh, two ways, those two focus area and uh, and uh, people who, who may concern about it, uh, is who is concerned about the metrics model. Uh, so so would it be like to... who is concerned about an operation yeah. metrics model and who is concerned about a development metrics model? Is that right? And, uh, and also uh, who, uh, who care about this metrics model, this is the tool. For example, uh, the community managers, they, they will care about the, the operations we, and also we need to care about, uh, uh, I mean, the de developers in the community also need to be concerned by the metrics model. This is probably two ways to think about okay. it. Yeah. So would, so how, okay, so if we have these focus areas, right? that we would develop metrics models in. So we'd have a, the metrics that are included in this metrics model are one, two, three, and four. You know what I mean? Like we have some metrics that are included in a, in a particular model. We provide a link. Is this like, should this be personas? Can I spell personas? I think the use use case models we could link use case models to personas for example we could we could create a community manager persona and then within that community manager persona we could actually create kind of a running list of use case models that we've created that are applicable to that persona uh, but in general i think those models would be built separately can we how so, uh, make, go ahead. there's just a thought that like uh, for example uh, if we create a persona that persona can use different use cases uh community manager can use different use cases to evaluate different scenarios sean did you have a comment just that um that i did post a link to there's another document from the app ecosystem group where they do enumerate personas and identify goals related to those personas i think our activity is we have to decide if we want to start at the the persona which is really i think a role in open source and 
and think about how how do we aggregate models so where where the community where the app ecosystem group has a a persona and then a list of goals related to that persona we would have a persona possibly probably the persona names themselves are very similar but we would have models related to those personas see i i would i actually envision so are you just a, a persona model you're not saying use cases associated um, with those i mean i think i think what's the difference between a use case and a goal so a, a use case i can uh, i think a use case is probably a little more uh high level mm -hmm. like a, a goal provides maybe more explicit uh uh is a, a goal I think is a little more explicit, whereas a whereas a mm -hmm. use case is going to be yeah a little more general. And I then, think you're but right. as far as the use cases go, I think the use cases themselves should be agnostic to personas, right? So a persona can use a use case, but a use case shouldn't necessarily belong to a persona. My brain is melting. Right. So we're using persona, use case, pullback, goal, pull, model, so, metric so, model, like so. So pullback M models you can't are what explain we want. This to anybody, P like, models so. are what we. There's a linguistic yeah, divide are, here. Y'all are doing some crazy vocabulary switch ups. Right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a linguistic. I think there's a linguistic divide, and I think the use case is effectively a, say expressing. Here's a situation where somebody wants to answer some particular collection of questions with a collection of metrics to accomplish some goal. And I think framing things through use cases is probably easier than trying to explicitly, you know, go back through the goal question metric model. If we say here's a use case and, and a model that that meets that use case, and then that model can then go pick from the 70 chaos metrics and the model being the metric model, right? The metric model, right. I mean metric model when I say model. Okay. Yeah. And okay. and all this other language we can throw out. So are you talking about one specific metric model or are you talking about different types of metric models? I'm talking about one specific metric model. Okay. So when, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about different models that would connect to connect together. So a, a persona is a type of model that would describe a community manager. Uh, how and then is a, a, a use case. A model? That, that? How, how is a persona a model? Well, in the same way that a use case is a model. <laughs> but we have mentioned no. this is where I so, so they so, so, so they they but I think I think the persona and the model are at different levels. Like I think the, the persona is very high level. Yes. And and then the the use case is operationalized. Like here's a collection of metrics that I in this role can use. And I will add like oh. I will use in a particular context. Well, let, let I, Sean finish his thought here for a second. Okay. But, and and so if we focus our efforts on collecting chaos metrics that fit together as models and and don't worry about the language around them but focus on how are these actually being used operationally by people? How are these metrics collected and used operationally? And that becomes a model. Then those models, they end up matrixing with the number of personas. So we have a lot of assets in the model, in the metrics that are already developed that we're trying to group together here, right? That's the big difference. Okay, so in in answer well, to hold on, Vinod had a comment. Let me how, can how, I uh, yeah I gotta how organize I, a little bit. How I perceive this, uh, I'm thinking through an example is like I take a persona of a community manager that fits into a persona definition, and how a community manager uses different cases of a, a metric model like a collection of metric in a different situation. For example, a community manager wants to assess the growth of a community. Okay, he'll take that case of a community growth, if I take those bunch of metrics and analyze that, that becomes a case for that particular persona. If that community manager wants to assess uh, uh, governance structure of his community, that community manager is the same persona, but is using a different 
use case to, uh, of uh, metric models to apply it in a different situation. This is how I perceive that uh, situation. Kevin? It, so a persona is a model of a user. So it's a model of a user that would use our metrics. I would say it's a description of a user who would use models. A use case is a model of an event or activity that a, that a persona may want to use. But if we want these use cases to be uh, really helpful, we don't want to connect the use cases to specific personas when we write them. Because different personas may be interested in these use cases or may be able to use those use cases. So the use cases themselves need to be a little agnostic of the persona. In my in my mind, the use what you're you calling a use case is a model. It's it's I'm going to in the for this use case accumulate this collection of chaos metrics into a model to satisfy uh, whatever that use case describes. Right. It explores an activity or an event of some sort. And a community manager may be interested in exploring that event, but a developer may be interested in exploring that event as well. Or I think, I think leaving personas out might leave, make this easier right now. I agree. I, so, thought, yeah, go uh, ahead. I was just going to say, would it be easy easier to just have a brainstorming session where we just list possible personas and then we list possible use cases and see how they all shake out and how they relate to each other. So I think the 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 personas are helpful because they 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 add a little bit of a roadmap to help people consume the metrics. Right? So me as a community manager may be interested in these metrics or these use cases. Uh, so it, it does act as a roadmap to get people to a place where they can consume them. But once again, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna ask a question then, would the model change though? First, depending on who the person is that's using it. So like a community manager may care about growth in the community, but may also want to see a component of diversity, equity and inclusion as well. But someone planning for a, you know, a hackathon or something wants to see growth of the community, but in a different way. And I think that's, I think you're getting at, at my point is that we do need to keep these use cases agnostic to certain personas. Otherwise, what you'll see is we will create duplicate or very similar use cases exploring these things in subtly different ways, right? So if we, if we keep them agnostic to the persona, we can, we can include some of those subtle things within the use case and let the persona decide which parts of the use case are helpful to them. So I have an activity. Mm -hmm. So Sean, and Kevin, you're, you have like there, there's it's still extremely confusing to me because I think we keep so there are a couple reasons. One is we keep using a lot of different words and like and they get collapsed on each other. And we also have a bunch of different layers that we're trying to to manage. So I'll start with Sean. Could you explain how we get to a metric model without using the word persona mm -hmm. or use case? So I, I wrote at the bottom of the notes that we start with collections of metrics that people are already using in practice and that those are our first models. And, and I, I suggest that by building those, we'll learn a lot about what all these other words mean. All right, Kevin, do you have a thought on that? I, I like that thought uh, in, the, 
in the past, the one that I usually bring up is the event badging. I think event badging is a, is a really great model to start with. So event badging is a metric model to you. Uh, yes, yeah, I do. Uh... Okay. So, and so then only then we would build the models and then perhaps we would think about why somebody might use the event badging metric model. Is that correct? That would be yeah. Uh, also, I'm thinking about uh, actually uh, in the currently uh, we are we are creating more metrics model uh, in my uh, in my communities. So, like um, we care about if um, NPI's night promoter score. So we we are thinking about uh, if developers in our communities uh, would recommend our community to their friends. So we create such metrics model, and in within this metrics model, we add some metrics to say, okay, if our whole uh, development process uh, could help the, these developers, and finally, these developers get very friendly environment in this community, and finally, he will recommend this community and this project to their friends. This okay. is some, some something like use case to say, okay, uh, we are gonna to create this metrics model to help them to evaluate the whole NPS, night like promoter score. So, so you, this is for me is a use case. It's very in the practice uh, in our community. Gotcha. So you you build the model kind of in parallel with asking yourself why you're building this model. Yeah, because we we have to do some investigation about uh, to say, okay, if you want us to say one metric or metric model to tell, uh, to tell other people that uh, how your communities uh, are going well. So but I don't want to use some healthy, okay, my, my community is healthy, no. We want to use some score. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we pop up this idea. So something like night, pro, uh, night uh, promoter score, NPIs, to tell them, okay, this is the, some general uh, score to describe our community, if it's good or not. And, it belong, and behind this NPIs, we create a model for, for, for this score. To and the capture data. the data. Yes. Okay. Data. This is something how uh, in our practice work for the metrics model. Gotcha. And does that include, is that basically accumulating different metrics to come up with a cumulative score of some sort? That's a model? Yes. Okay. They contain three areas, like code, like content, and community. Three areas to, to uh, uh, com compromise uh, to this metrics model. So we are thinking about the whole development as a code. We are thinking about this documentation as, as uh, trainings, as content, and we are thinking about the different events uh, in the in the uh, in the community. So, like three C, to describe this NPS model. So, so I made some notes in the in the notes section that there are three acts three aspects in a model code content and community yeah yeah in this one so, is this is this a generalized thing or just one example the just for the my example in our practice okay we, yeah this is not only a metric model we are thinking about but uh, okay this is the first metric model we want to put it in our, our community to 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 evaluate how it works I have posted a issue on uh, in the chat, uh, which is uh, which I brought it up in the value working group was like similarly a situation where you see different uh, you can pick different metrics and then develop a model out of it and solve that 
particular situation. That was business readiness rating of open source software. This is just an example I'm trying to give here is like the context in which these different uh, metrics can be grouped or performed and show how the model can work. <clears throat> so, okay. So listening to Yehoi and Sean and Kevin, like I'm, trying, I'm just trying to get away from, it seems like we get yeah. in this endless loop of personas and use cases. Right. And like, what if we did something like this? So like we have the different focus areas. And I think Yehoi, you had called it an NPS model. NPI. NPS or MPI? And MPIs, Night Promoter Score. Okay. And so why you care? <laughs> you being just the general you. you because, uh, because not not my I, I would care about the community would care about it. They would care about the one developer if they want to recommend this community to their friends. Yeah, so I, that's what this is. If this is what this model is largely based on, we can build yeah. on like a bigger description of why you might care. Mm -hmm. And then the metrics. I, you know, we don't. I don't have the metrics in front of me, but you had mentioned code content and community metrics help yeah. ultimately define this NPS model. And so, Kevin, if we did like the badging program. Uh, or like I should say like DEI badging, right? So why you care? Because you want, want to better tend to DEI in your conferences. That's why you care, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, the metrics, they're, you know, Third EI related metrics. You get specific in terms of what metrics are actually in there. And this one is actually released. <laughs> like this one's actually done. Okay. Yeah, we are we've released our first <laughs> <laughs> metric model. <laughs> Good job. And then like Yehoi, I don't mean to have you track down that slide deck again, but there was that, you know, the the development model that you had shared. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that has a name, like, you know, whatever. Code development model. You know what I mean? And why you might care, because you want to help development activities. I am totally making this up. This yeah. It has metric one, metric two, and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And we can go and track those down. So the the why you care column of C, like, is this starting to take care of personas and use cases, Sean and Kevin? A little bit for me, but not quite. So the. I think what we're what we're kind of talking about is having creating a, a standardized way of creating these these models, right? So the NPS but, model and the DE, DEI badging model, I could see those existing in kind of a standard a standard text based model that that describes the metrics that are involved and the activity involved. The code development model, on the other hand, is more of a that's a process flowchart type model. So it's the the perspectives are are different. It's it's kind of a it's a higher level thing. Uh, can can we yeah. get away with imperfection at the moment? Yeah, I think I think what you're describing is why you care is the same thing as the, the what is the what is the use in practice. I, I think and, we can do do you want sorry sorry sir you, you can go on. I'm done. 
No, I don't think you're done. No, I'm really, I'm really, I, I, I was finished with my thought. Uh, Not a uh, complex person. You know, <laughs> you know I, I think we, uh, my personal view is that uh, for the code development model, I share the same point with, uh, with Kevin that right? it's, it's kind of high level. It's a flow chart. It's a, it's a include the different metrics and also many different uh, personas would care about it, like a release manager, delivery manager, and a community manager. It's just the flow chart to, to include in the everything, in, uh, I mean, the metrics into this to show this the whole development process. But we cannot treat it as a, some, some metrics model into the development because not only one or, 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 or some use case would care about the whole the whole tri whole uh, development process. So I'm thinking about except we have such focus area as use case or personnels, we also need to create some big view about the whole matrix model, a matrix in the chaos to show how the connections with each other to give them the general view. We can treat we can treat it as uh, some some uh, training documentation. Uh, from the metrics, from the chaos metrics to show how, how it works. But uh, it's just the, the basic ideas. And based on this basic idea, we can uh, deep down, uh, deep, uh, deep, dive, deep dive into this focus area to, to do some more practice uh, in practice work. So I, uh, I agree with that completely. And uh, I, uh, I think, so to be clear, I think there's room, there's room for these, for different types of models. Uh, when I was talking prior, I'm talking, I was talking about having exactly, exactly what you just said, a way to connect these different types of models that we're creating. And I think to Sean's point, perhaps the best place to start is with that. And I'm sorry, Matt, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that, the use case model. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me, Kevin? Sorry. We start. We start with that type of model. That type of model that Sean is describing. We start there, but as we go, I think we should be thinking about a, a higher level structure. How we can think about how these models are related to each other in 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 larger high level models processes, and how they might be related to different types of users. But um, I, I think I think I, we do. We start where Sean said, and we can think about this other stuff later. I, I say I say use case why we care and practices are all kind of the same thing at this stage because they're all different ways of expressing what we're trying to get to. Yes, and we won't know for what exactly we're trying to get to until we try to build some of these models from existing metrics, and that should be our next step. Okay, so. We, we are at the end of time. I'm going to... And I have to go. I'm sorry. I've got another commitment. Super simple. That's all. We just, this has to be simple so we can express it to, to other folks. That's all. I think that's my one hesitation here that it gets, if it's complex to us, like if we give it to other people, it's just going to melt brains is what it's going to do. So, <laughs> all righty. Thank you, everybody. It was good to see see you all, and we will see you next time. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.